Hello again everybody, this is Alex Gorbanov and this time I've got another video demonstration for you. And in this video demonstration I'm going to show you how to model twisted objects like the one that you see on your screen. And from the first look you might say, well what's so difficult about making objects like this? Just create a profile then extrude it and twist it. And yes, that is a very fast way to make an object like that, but it not necessarily mean that this is the best way to make an object like that. So I'm going to show you an alternative technique of making twisted objects. And basically you can use that technique to twist any profile. So in this video demonstration, we're going to overview the both ways to make this object and we're going to put them side by side so we can see the difference. So let's go ahead and restart 3D Studio Max. Let's also maximize perspective viewport and hide the home grid. Now let's create a shape from the command panel and we're going to create a rectangle. Now when you create a rectangle, let's make sure we're using the same numbers for length and width of this object so that we're going to get the similar results. So let's input 50 for length and 50 for width and don't forget to make sure that you work in a generic unit system. Now let's also hide selection brackets represented by these white lines by pushing J on the keyboard. And now we're ready to convert this object into editable spline. Now after you've converted this object into editable spline, go to vertex subobject mode, select all vertices and make sure they all set to corner type. Then select all segments from the segments of object mode and make sure they all set to line type. Now go back to vertex subobject mode and go to top view. Now we're going to chamfer all those vertices with the chamfer tool. So click this chamfer button and position mouse cursor over any of these selected vertices. Now when you press left mouse button, while holding this button, you can drag your mouse up and down and you can see how you change in this editable spline object and you can see the result interactively in the viewport. So right now the goal is to achieve the look of this octagonal shape and when you see that the shape that you have on your screen looks similar to one that I have on my screen just release left mouse button and that will fix the edits. Now you can also exit from chamfer tool and let's select all vertices again and make sure they convert it into corner type. And let's chamfer it one more time, but this time we are going to chamfer them just a little bit, just a small value. Uh, for example, in this case, I had 1.287, so keep it within that range, and the shape will look like that. Select all vertices one more time, and again, convert them into corner type. Now let's go to segment subobject mode and we need to select these left, right, top and down segments. As you can see, I have selected on my screen. Now here's what we're gonna do. We are going to scale this selection of segments up along X and Y axis. So for that we go to non-uniform scale mode and we start scaling this selection of segments up and what you can see happening is that we're not just increasing the size of each individual segment we're also pushing them away from the center of the selection so as you can see in this particular case I've scaled it up 123 percent along X and Y axes so that's what your shape should look like Okay, now we can switch to vertex of object mode and make sure all vertices selected. And we're going to use fillet tool. Just, just the same way as we used chamfer tool several minutes ago, just click left mouse button over any vertex and start dragging your mouse up and down. And so we can create these nice tiny radius fillets. And small value like 2.002 in this particular case would do job just fine so this is what your shape should look like now so now we can exit from vertex of object mode and get back to perspective view now we need to apply extrude modifier so go ahead and pick it up from the list of modifiers now for the extrusion amount let's use the same number right now and let's set this number to 
200. So the object that we see on our screens looks the same way. Now we can also uncheck these parameters such as cap start and cap end. So we can keep this object open. And this is what it looks like. Now you can see that the level of detail here on these curves is just, I think it's too much. We can go back to editable spline object and go into interpolation rollout and decrease the number of steps that defines the level of detail for the spline. So right now you can see it's set to six. So let's set it down to three and this is what object looks like now. And I think it looks good. So we can go back to extrude modifier and 